Did you know that about 1% of English words come from Dutch? Yes, that's much less than French or Latin or Old Norse or Anglo-Saxon, as you can see from this graph. But before you dismiss that as insignificant, wait until you hear which words they gave us and how they've shaken up the English language to a much greater degree than you might think. By the way, check out this video if you want to know how I arrived at these stats and what happened to Greek. Today on Let Them Talk TV, we're going to look at the fascinating story of how the Dutch language has influenced English. And if you're learning English, I'll show you words and expressions of Dutch origin that will spice up your English. Actually, I didn't want to say spice up. I wanted to use a Dutch word. The closest I could think of is pickle, which comes from Middle Dutch, peckle. So I could say it'll pickle up your English. And if you're ready and you're feeling lucky, then let's go. Let's start with some vocabulary. Some words came into English directly from Dutch or Flemish, which is a dialect of Dutch, while others can be traced back to other languages, but came to us via Dutch, mainly as a result of their importance as a trading power in the 15th to the 18th centuries. So for example, what are you doing now? Apart from watching this video, of course. You might be drinking coffee. When you order your cup of coffee, you're speaking the Dutch version of a word, coffee, and the Dutch got it from Arabic, kawa, you got it from Turkish, kave. Dutch traders spread and promoted the drinking of coffee in the mid 17th century. And if you're not drinking coffee, then perhaps you're sipping a cup of tea. Yep, we get that from Dutch too. And they got it from the Min dialect of Chinese spoken in Fujian province. In the second half of the 16th century, England did not have any direct trade with China, but the Dutch did. We use their rendition of the Min word and most of Europe takes the word tea from the Dutch. The other traders of tea were the Portuguese. They gave us the word cha, which is the Mandarin Chinese word for tea. Tea in Portuguese is cha. Cha was the first word used for tea in English until the Dutch came along and it's still a synonym for tea today. Fancy a cup of cha? And what are you eating with your tea or coffee? Perhaps a cookie or two? A cookie. Uh, this comes from the Dutch. Cookie which means a little cake. And if not a cookie, maybe a scone. There you are, a scone, which is another Dutch word, which was originally schoenbrot, or fine bread, and the English took this word via the Scotch. And did I just spend half the morning traipsing across Paris just to find a scone to show you in this video for three seconds? Well, I won't answer that. Anyway, if you're having something to eat, but not full meal, perhaps a snack, that's another Dutch word, snack, and it comes from the Middle Dutch, snacken, to snatch or to snap or to chatter. And if you're watching this video in the evening, you might be drinking something stronger than tea or coffee. Perhaps you're drinking alcohol. Well, no, alcohol is from Arabic, but the informal term for an alcoholic drink in English is booze, as I'm sure you know. And booze is from the middle Dutch slang word boosen, which meant to drink to excess. I must have some booze. I demand to have some booze. And perhaps some of you out there have a passion for technology or computers, or maybe you work in IT. If you do, I might say that you are a geek. In Dutch, gek means a fool, but don't let that worry because I'm a bit of a geek myself. How did this all come about? 
we're going to look at the history of Dutch migration and trade as well as the rivalry, often bloody rivalry, between England and the Netherlands. You won't want to miss this. But first, a word from our sponsors, NordVPN. Now, this is the first time I've ever done a sponsored video and there is a reason for it because I had already been using NordVPN for a long time before they approached me. Having a VPN is a no-brainer for me for a number of reasons. Firstly, so many times while I've been doing research for this channel, I've been blocked from a website in the US because it's not available to someone in the EU. But with the click of a button, voila, problem solved. And when I'm traveling, I want websites to default to English rather than the local language, which I might not know. For those of you who watch online streaming services, you often get different content from one country to another. So if the movie or series is not available where you are, just select a server from the country which has what you're looking for, and there you are. NordVPN also protects your device against malware and spyware and pop-up ads and keeps your data private. It'll work with your computer, your tablet and phone. And it's not expensive. If you choose the two year plan, it works out about the price of one coffee a month at your favorite franchise coffee chain. Get the exclusive NordVPN deal here at nordvpn.com forward slash let them talk TV. It's risk free with NordVPN's 30 day money back guarantee. You'll also find the link in the description. We'll start our tale at the end of Roman rule in Britain in 410 AD. In this period, a number of tribes from Northern Europe migrated to Britain, and these included the Angles, the Saxons, and the Jutes. The language that evolved from these tribes, I shall refer to as Anglo-Saxon or Old English, and these terms are interchangeable. There would have been trade between the Anglo-Saxons and those on the other side of the channel in what is now the Netherlands, Belgium and the northwestern tip of Normandy. Between the 5th and the 12th centuries the language they spoke there is known today as Old Dutch. Just a side note, Old Dutch is a language that evolved from Frankish which is where France gets its name from. And the French language got a lot of its vocabulary from Frankish, but that's a subject for another day. Now, along the coast was another tribe, the Frisians, who spoke Frisian, which is considered to be the closest language to English. But we'll talk about that another day too. Today, let's focus on Dutch. So, Old Dutch and Anglo-Saxon shared a common ancestor. And during this early medieval period, these languages would have been mutually comprehensible to some extent, but how much so is difficult to say, as only fragments of documents and texts written in Old Dutch have survived. But what is clear is that over time, the languages drifted apart. And if you're wondering how English fits in with the other languages, have a look at this graph. Most linguists consider English to be a West Germanic language, but there is a minority opinion which considers it to be a North Germanic language, along with the likes of Icelandic, Swedish, Norwegian and Danish. For more on that, check out my brilliant video on how the Vikings changed the English language. Every schoolboy and schoolgirl in Britain learns that the last invasion of England happened in 1066 at the Battle of Hastings when William the Conqueror of Normandy defeated the English King Harold. Now, that might not be quite right. There might have been a more recent invasion. We'll look at that in a moment. But did you know that William's army was not only Norman, 
about one third of the invading Norman army of 1066 came from Dutch speaking Flanders, some of whom were rewarded with endowments of land in England. A word about terminology here. Flemings are the people from Flanders. The definition of a Fleming today is a little different from that of the Middle Ages. At the time, a Fleming was anyone from not only modern day Flanders, but also many Dutch speakers of what is today the Netherlands. The connection between the Low Countries and Britain goes back a long way and many migrants and refugees came over to Britain from the Low Countries. Just to give you an example of the numbers, in 1527 there were tens of thousands of Flemings in London, many in the weaving and textile industry and it is estimated that about one third of Scots have a Flemish background and explains why so many Scottish people or people of Scottish descent have the surname Fleming. For example, Ian Fleming, the author of the James Bond novels, whose father was Scottish, and Sir Alexander Fleming, the Scottish doctor who discovered penicillin. Throughout the Middle Ages, there was not only migration from Flemish and Dutch lands, but also a large share of English trade in the 13th century was in the hands of Flemish merchants. So we see quite a number of Dutch words relating to commerce entering the English language at that time. The word trade itself is of Dutch origin and it meant the track of a ship. Other words include pack and bundle from Middle Dutch and bundle meant a collection of things tied together. The word deal may have been of Middle Dutch or Frisian origin and meant to divide up. And wagon is also of Middle Dutch, meaning a vehicle to carry goods. On your wagon, you might put a bale, another Dutch word, and kit, comes from Middle Dutch, kitter, and originally meant a wooden container. Dock comes from Middle Dutch, docke. The Flemish were important players in the beer industry, as they still are today. And many Flemings set up breweries in the south of England during the 14th century. And the techniques they used were different from the English brewers. The Flemish used hops, whereas the English were using malt to make ale. The word brewery itself comes from Dutch brouwerij. And the word hop comes from Dutch hopper. The Dutch were an important seafaring power. And from there we get a few nautical terms relating to ships, such as skipper, deck, dock, and to cruise, plug, which was originally a nautical term, and the word freight, which means to carry goods by water. During the 16th and 17th centuries, Dutch schools of painting influenced the art world. And from there, we get the terms masterpiece from the Dutch, Meesterstuk, easel and sketch, and still life, landscape from the Dutch, Landschap, and etch. Do come up and see my etching. They are not famous for their cuisine, perhaps, but we get quite a few words about food from the Dutch. We've already mentioned cookie and scone and pickle. We also get waffle and coleslaw and offal, which comes from Middle Dutch offal and means waste parts, if you're into that kind of thing. Through this close trading relationship and immigration, English acquired great deal of new vocabulary. And in addition, the Dutch as a global trading power through the Dutch East India Company brought us new vocabulary from far flung places. We already mentioned tea and coffee, and there was also bamboo and batik amongst others. But there was conflict. There were four bloody wars between England and the Netherlands between the 1650s and the 1780s. Yes, that's right. The Dutch were our colonial 
rivals and our enemy for more than 100 years. And this could explain why there are so many expressions in English referring to the Dutch, most of which are negative. We're going to look at the expressions in a second, but a word about the war. Did you know that between the 19th and 24th of June 1667, during the Second Anglo-Dutch War, the Dutch Navy sailed up the Thames estuary into the river Medway, where they destroyed the English fleet and captured the town of Sheerness. It was the worst defeat in English naval history at that time. And that was the last time England was technically invaded. So there was a lot of enmity between the two nations. And here are a few English expressions about the dastardly Dutch. I'll indicate which are everyday expressions to this day and which are less commonly used these days. Double Dutch. This is another term for gibberish. Someone who's speaking your own language, but the way they are speaking it makes no sense at all. So for example, I went to the website of the tax office to find out how to get a tax rebate, but the instructions make no sense at all. I just don't understand it. It's just double Dutch. Dutch courage. This is courage you get from drinking alcohol. It's negative because it's a fake courage, one that comes from a bottle and not from within. So for example, I'm a very shy person, so before I give a speech to the members, I need a little Dutch courage, you know what I mean? To go Dutch. This means that each person pays their share of the bill, often used in dating situations when the woman pays her share of the bill instead of being invited by the guy. That was a delightful meal, but the bill is quite expensive, isn't it? Shall we go Dutch? Oh yes, okay. Related to this is Dutch treat, where you're invited for a meal, but you're expected to pay your share of the bill. That's not really a treat at all. Dutch comfort. That's when something bad happens and then someone tells you that it could have been worse. You're so lucky you only broke your leg in the car crash. I mean, you could have got killed. Oh yeah. Well, thank you for your piece of Dutch comfort. A Dutch uncle is somebody who criticizes and offers harsh advice all the time. The opposite of what you'd expect from a normal uncle. Look at you, what a mess. Cut your hair and smarten up and don't drink so much coffee and stop wasting your time on YouTube. A Dutch auction. This is the sort of an auction in reverse. The price starts high and goes down until somebody accepts the price. Dutch gold. This looks like gold, but in fact, it's a cheap metal alloy with a similar appearance. And a Dutch widow is a prostitute. Now our journey of Dutch influence takes us across the Atlantic to the United States. I'm sure you know that New York was once a Dutch colony and was known as New Amsterdam. If you go to New York today, you'll find Harlem, named after the Dutch town of Harlem, and Brooklyn, named after the Dutch village of Brooklyn. Also, Dolla comes to us from Dutch via the Scots language. And if you call an American a Yankee, it might be a corruption of the Dutch name Jan Kees, although this is disputed. There is still some interesting vocabulary that we still haven't covered yet. And if you're learning English, here are some great words of Dutch origin to use in your conversation or your writing. Let's start with hanker, which means to have a strong desire for something. Oh, I'm hankering for some cookies and coleslaw. Dapper, which means very smart in appearance. 
and it's usually said about a man. Rude, you look so dapper in your Armani suit and clogs. Frolic, which means to play around and have fun and comes from frolic, which means cheerful in Dutch. We frolicked on the beach at Zeebrugge for many hours. Loiter, this means to hang around in a place without any purpose. You'll see no loitering signs all over Britain. Oi, there's no loitering outside my windmill. Go back home, guys. Poppycock. This is a synonym for nonsense. It sounds so British, but in fact, it was first used in America and they took it from the Dutch. Poppycock. What did you say? Amsterdam doesn't have any bicycle lanes. What poppycock. Snoop. To snoop means to spy on someone or to secretly look for information about them. Saskia, why are you snooping around my yacht? Go back on deck immediately. Spooky. Spooky means something strange and ghostly that makes you afraid. Let me tell you, walking through the old graveyard in Utrecht at 4 a.m. was a bit spooky. Wiggle. This means small, rapid movements. The expression wiggle room means a little bit of space or freedom to change the decision. We'll set the price for the tulip bulbs very high. This will give us a little wiggle room if we wish to reduce it later. What could possibly go wrong? Quack. A quack is an unqualified person who practices medicine. You might also refer to your actual doctor as a quack, but only in a humorous way. It comes from quacksulfur, meaning someone who applies ointments. So he told me that the best way to avoid getting COVID was to eat lots of Edam cheese and to watch the films of Audrey Hepburn. Mm. Sounds like a quack to me. Finally, an honourable mention to aardvark, a very important word in the English language, but not in any other language. It comes from Afrikaans, which takes the word from Dutch. And this is an aardvark. Why is it so important? Can't you see it? Can't you see it? Yes, that's right. It's the first word in the dictionary and a favourite word for plumbers and builders and other tradespeople who name their company Aardvark Limited so that they appear at the top of the alphabetical list because people can't be bothered to look down the, the list and so they choose the first one. Aardvark Plumbers, that'll do. Shall we check some others? No, 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 we haven't got time. There's a leak in the kitchen. It's getting flooded. Okay. So let us know in the comments if I've left out any important words of Dutch origin and tell me what else you'd like me to cover in this series of history of the English language. I'm going to eat my cookies and scones now, so stay mellow and tot of to gear. All the Dutch words that were said correctly in this video read by Robin Eichinger. Many thanks for that. Goodbye now. <laughs>